What the world needs right now is less government and more leaders working in the best interests of humanity. Many people fear a new world order or a one world order, but if something like this was implemented in the right way, it could be the best idea ever. Unfortunately, we have come to associate a new world order or a one world order as something that represents tyranny and oppression when it could actually represent a new age of peace, abundance, and prosperity for everyone. The biggest problem on this planet is government. If you trace the etymology of government, it means to control the mind. In the United States, it seems like everything the government tried to run inevitably fails. Look no further than the post office or the takeover of General Motors. So the word government would be eliminated while the actual principle behind government would be replaced with a tribunal or council of elders representing all races and ethnicities who would work solely in the best interests of humanity. There would no longer be any two or four year term limits. We could vote on them every month if we wanted to. These elders would be 100% transparent and accountable each and every month. The minute they stop working in humanity's best interests, they're fired, plain and simple. With the elimination of government, all patents, both public and suppressed, would be released, which would instantly transform this world into a new paradigm and would make the days we're currently living in seem like the Stone Age. According to Dr. Leonard Caldwell, there are over 300 cures for cancer, but most doctors are required by law to use surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy before any proven holistic measures such as the Rife machine, THC oil, etc. This is but one small example of how beneficial technology and ideas have been suppressed from us, all in the interests of money, greed, and eugenics. In 1893, Nikola Tesla powered the Chicago's World Fair on free energy. His financier, J.P. Morgan, asked Tesla how he could charge people for this energy. Tesla stated it was free energy and that it could not be regulated. From that point forward, Morgan suppressed this idea because Morgan believed that he who controls the energy controls the power. As we know, Morgan became one of the founding fathers of the world's biggest Ponzi scheme, the Federal Reserve. Stanley Meyer invented a car that could go from coast to coast in the United States on 22 gallons of water. It could be any water, salt water, lake water, tap water, compressed snow, etc. Meyer was offered $1 billion from the automotive industry, but turned it down because he wanted this invention to go out to the people. Shortly afterwards, he was poisoned to death. Since the end of the 1800s, we should have had free electricity. Since the 1980s, we could have been using water-powered cars. Are you beginning to see the picture? Current companies and corporations could be re-educated to provide new services that benefit humanity and will be transparent and accountable for their actions. For example, Monsanto would immediately halt the production of their GMOs, but could start working on the genetic modification of fruits and vegetables that would be beneficial to society. As an example, they could splice the gene of a North Atlantic salmon with a tomato so people could grow tomatoes in cold environments, but there would not be anything detrimental in this product, such as pesticides that cause tumors in laboratory animals. Another example would be General Electric, who could start producing free energy systems. A common argument is that many people would lose their jobs due to new technologies. The people in the horse and buggy business thought the same thing when the car was introduced. New inventions will actually create new jobs. For example, the last thing that Big Pharma cured was polio and they realized that there is no money in providing a cure for anything. Essentially, Big Pharma places a band-aid over our illnesses and diseases through perpetual maintenance versus finding a cure. From this point forward, Big Pharma will focus on cures instead of a temporary bandage that supports their industry through lifelong medications. A new breed of doctors will emerge who place holistic treatment ahead of anything else. In time, 
the big pharma doctor will either need to learn holistic medicine or will be phased out of existence. Of course, there are some things that cannot be cured and need maintenance through big pharma. But instead of using holistic treatment as a last resort, it will become the primary option. Most laws would be reduced to universal laws, where as long as you're not harming yourself or others, you are free to do as you please. There probably should be a few sub-laws, such as speed limits in neighborhoods where there are families, but generally all laws are based on respect for one another. Our police officers would once again become peace officers, and their main job would no longer be enforcing maritime code, but supporting peace. Similar to the Council of Elders, the peace officers will be held accountable for their actions and can be immediately replaced by someone who is willing to work in the best interests of humanity. Violators of any laws would be placed in a re-educational facility and would receive education on how to assimilate into this new society. Additionally, they would also provide free labor in producing new technologies that would benefit everyone, including themselves, upon release. A common language among all people should be implemented so we are able to communicate with one another across the world. This doesn't mean that it will be the only language, but it will be the language that everyone can understand and comprehend. Through the Venus Project, it has been proven that everyone can live in abundance and prosperity without the need for money. So money will be phased out as we no longer are economic slaves and are able to pursue our true divine reasons for being here. In time, most people will develop hobbies and interests that will help to support this new economy, but it starts without the need for individual gain or financial superiority over anyone else. All new ideas will immediately become open source, where if someone else has a better way or a modification of what you invented or created, then that idea is free for anyone to use, implement, or recreate into something better. As evidenced through the numerous cases of pedophilia, corruption, and crimes against humanity, the Roman Catholic Church would be dissolved and their net worth would be distributed throughout the world, creating instant abundance for everyone. The Roman Catholic Church has enough net worth to feed, clothe, and shelter everyone on this planet. So one must ask themselves, why is there starvation and homelessness? Just like all governments, the Roman Catholic Church is more into subservience, control, and conformity than it is honoring the word of their texts. In the ideal world, all religious texts would boil down to four words, love everyone, respect everything. Our educational system would be tailored to each child's strengths and needs versus clumping all children into one educational format. For example, an extrovert might excel more in a class where they're learning about public speaking, while the introvert might excel more in philosophy and the arts. A Montessori setting might be more applicable where the children's classroom would be outside in nature. Innate abilities such as clairvoyance would not be ridiculed but would be encouraged as we are all born with unique gifts and abilities. We should also teach holistic remedies and cures for illnesses. For example, Big Pharma recommends heartburn medications such as Rolaids, Tums, and Pepsid AC. Innately, when you have heartburn, your body is telling you that your acid levels are too high and that you need to boost your alkalines. But Big Pharma is telling you that you can continue to eat unhealthy food because they have a pill that will resolve this issue. We're not being taught how to listen to our bodies or how to resolve these issues without the need for Big Pharma. A complete revision of history needs to be rewritten, not by the winner who always seems to record history, but from every perspective without propaganda. Additionally, the origins of mankind need to be reconsidered as there is evidence of mankind on Earth for many tens of thousands of years, as evidenced by researchers such as Michael Cremo and Graham Hancock. The way we view television will be completely revised Imagine watching the 6 o'clock news and feeling good afterwards. 
The newscasters would report on all the positive things that are going on in this world instead of reinforcing fear and negativity. If there were any commercials, they would be for ideas and products that would benefit humanity versus selling us crap that we don't need or something that is designed to be made under the premise of controlled obsolescence, which forces us to buy the newer version every couple of years. The current paradigm thrives on the divide and conquer premise, which prevents us from coming together as a global society. Before anything, we all need to put aside any and all differences to unite because once the bottom of the pyramid unites, the rest will collapse. One thing that will need to be determined and defined is what the best interests of humanity would be. Other things needed to be discussed would be ways to disarm and eliminate nuclear weapons and nuclear waste, the irrigation and purification of our water supply, new methods of cleaning up our environment, sustainable living through eco-friendly homes, as well as the optimal ways to grow food. I'm sure that there are many other ideas that would help make this world a better place for all of us, but this gives us a good starting point. I'm just a simple guy with a few ideas on how to fix what is broken. Any ideas from this point forward should all be open source, where there are no patents or individual intellectual ownership. We all need to work in the best interests of humanity and not for our own materialistic interests because the path that we're heading is completely unsustainable. As David Icke says, the few control the many. We are the many and we have the numbers to make this happen right now. Like the Hopi said, we are the ones that we have been waiting for. We are also the light at the end of the tunnel. What the world needs right now is for everyone to come together in a common cause. What ideas do you have? Let's work on this together. Leave your comments below this video. Also feel free to share and mirror this video on your YouTube channel as well. That's it for now. This is Greg from N5D.com.